All right, tonight's shave is going to be with um, one new product, one really, really used product. Um, I'm going to start out with showing you the brush. This is the B5 from Declaration Grooming Knot. It's a badger knot. And uh, this is the tall handle from Whip Dog, 24 millimeter handle. I like to soak my brushes in water. Um, be they boar or badger. Um, especially boar needs it. Badger is kind of optional. I like to do it. And the uh, blade we're going to use today is the Nasset I've been using for quite a while now. 50 dots on that side. Last night I started the other side with one dot. And so 51 uses. So now we're at a deck of cards with 52 uses for the Gillette Nasset. And it's not pulling. It's not uncomfortable. Uh, let alone irritating or painful. But if it ever gets to those kind of points, I'm just going to stop. Now... Uh, what am I going to put it in? I have been using uh, this head maybe a month ago or three weeks ago. Um, this is the Razor Rock Game Changer. I've got it on this Weber Bulldog handle. If you, if you would like a Weber Bulldog handle, they're on eBay. Just look for them. Um, they, I think it was um, something. I don't, yeah, I don't think it was Amazon. I think it was eBay. And I even got an imperfect one and it saved 10 bucks. And it's a... Uh, I think what made it imperfect was there may be a discoloration like somewhere. Yeah, you might be able to see it right there and that's it. So anyway, um, I like it. Uh, short little guy, relatively. And, uh, and I thought he was a good match for this Razor Rock Game Changer head. And this is the original one. Um, how can you tell what um, uh, aggression level it is? You look at that, the number uh, on the underside, the serial number's over here, but over here is like the item number, GC, you know, game changer, uh, and then 68-P, um, so 68. 68 is going to be the gap, how far away the blade edge is from the bottom bar is my understanding of what that measurement is. Um, and this one's so mild, and the geometry is just wrong uh, for me. And a lot of other people think that they're too, too mild as well. But maybe so there are other people out there with cheeks and skin that's different, especially if you can go against the grain on your neck or other areas. I can't really do it on my neck. And so it left large swaths of unshaven hairs. Um, and, I mean, to me, the, that's worse than any vintage Gillette out there um, and there are just there are hundreds of vintage Gillettes out there and I've tried uh, not hundreds but I mean there are lots of models slims and techs and adjustables and fat boys and you know super adjustables and uh, news and new improves and um, long combs and short combs and uh, old types um, there are just uh, so many and they all shave better than this and so to call it a j game changer to me was just really poor uh, decision making um because it was it was such a letdown um however let's see what the new game changer has to say um by new i mean the new gap this is an 84 gap game changer this is the radio knob handle that came with it and this is a little different radio knob handle. The other one I got from a trade with somebody. Um, you could actually remove this, the ball end portion right here. This one, it doesn't seem like, I mean, maybe it's screwed in so tight I can't get it loose, but I don't think you can actually remove it. Um, so that's a slight, slight difference. I think I kind of like that because I, I never intended to remove the other one anyway. Um, and, uh, and then they changed it a little bit. I really like this. They uh, stair-stepped. They put a, a groove down the middle of the bottom there. I think it makes it look, makes it look a lot nicer. Um, but in every other way, it seems pretty much the same. Uh, and then we'll look at that item number, GC84P. And so this is the 84 uh, 
0.84 millimeter gap more aggressive than the, the mild version and so let's see let's see what happens so i will unscrew the handle take off the top cap take my venerable nasset blade put it on those posts right there this is somewhat akin to the gillette sorry to the wolfman gorilla and a few others um, one thing i do like about it the finish seems really good um, uh, but the thing i was specifically meaning to say was the uh, blades are secure and they don't need to be uh, generally monitored or adjusted i uh, want you once you get everything pulled in nicely and so just gently screw it together and there you go and there's that blade and you can see the the gap there between the uh, the safety bar and the blade edge let's just see how aggressive this guy is it would be a shame if they went too far to the other side the original one the 68 is so mild it's unusable i would hate for um, the 84 to go the other direction um, but let's just see what happens um, in a way this is not a fair test I'll say that up front because this is with a blade that is 51 uses old however recently I have shaved with this very blade with its age intact um, in a, a Wolfman WR1 at a 67 uh, gap I've shaved with a carved Bradley um, razor double A, which is their slimmest, their mildest setting. Um, the Wolfman was a little bit more on the aggressive. I've shaved it with a Gillette Super Adjustable at about maybe a four setting. And so I've used it with other, the same aged blade I've used with other razors. And so I know how it feels. And that is an accurate comparison. So the blade is loaded. The brush has definitely had plenty of time to soak. I think this brush maybe I've used uh, 10 or 11 times, so it's kind of newish. Um, my lather bowl's right here. What soap am I going to use today? I've still got some congestion. I can't really smell, and so I have some samples I want to try, but I don't want to try them with uh, a lack of an impaired lack of smell. I think I'm at about 50%. I can, I'm starting to get it back. Um, but right here is the Williams Puck that I have been um, uh, soaking in hot for a while now. And it's floating around now. It's so thin on the bottom. I'm going to pour out the bloom water. Um, I'm curious as to how many more uses this guy is going to give me. Okay. I have used, uh, this is the puck that I used during all of August. It gives great lather. Um, watch my video yesterday and the day before if you are in doubt. Um, yesterday's lather was kind of more of a performance lather, which was plenty slick. Didn't quite have the cushion and the like thick luxury. But a lot of times if you have that thickness, you don't get as, uh, as good protection. Um, if you want that thick luxury, do a, another day before that. So two days ago, um, you'll see how I did that. And both lathers were just terrific. And so if you get thin, airy lathers from Williams, uh, number one, the best thing to do is just keep mixing. Uh, and they'll, they'll solidify. They'll, they'll be right. Um, or go back to those previous videos. All right. Um, so warm soak. That means a short load time. Without a soak, maybe about a 60-second load time. With the soak that I did... I'm going to do 20 and that should give me, I did 30 yesterday and the day before and I had left lather left over. So I'm going to do 20 today. Uh, and it looks like we're ready to go. I'm going to get my face wet. As usual, I'll let you know the caveats. The, uh, I have hard water. So Williams works great in hard water and I just use whatever comes out of the cold tap. And, um, I am just going to pull the, uh, brush up and just use it as is 
and see what happens. All right, so now see if I tilt it, I get a little bit of drainage. So I'll go ahead and let that kind of stabilize. All right, so that's how much water I'm gonna use and we'll see how it goes. My other bores probably hold a little bit more water than this. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's about the same. So that is a variation, it, depending on how big your brush is. This is a 24 millimeter handle. Um, so there you go. All right, here we go. I'm gonna allow that for 20 seconds. And so there's, I hit the 30. So I'm gonna go until 50 and that'll be 20 seconds. I haven't used, I don't know that I've used this brush with Williams. Um, and I'm actually gonna go to 51 because I actually started at 31. You know what, this brush is different. I'm gonna go to 101 because I just haven't tried. I'd rather go to excess instead of be a little short on, and there we go, 101. And so it looks very bubbly. You know, you almost wouldn't think, um, but let's just see. Um, I know with my other, uh, my Samoga Owners Club and my 24 millimeter whip dog bore that this would be plenty. And I, I probably have two passes left over of extra lather. That's what I had yesterday and the day before. All right, so all I have is an empty bowl. I'm relying on the water left in the brush and we're just going to start. It will whip up very airy at first. Now this brush I haven't really used, I don't know that I've used it on Williams before and so it could be very different. Yeah, just a nice soapy scent to me. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other, you can look, uh, I have a playlist, Austere August. I pretty much documented almost every shave in that, that month as I was working with Williams the whole month. Um, don't really know where that was going. I had something relevant. Now this is pretty quickly, uh, the bubbles are pretty quickly settling down. Maybe that was what I was talking about. Um, you know, I used it all month and bubbles usually took a little bit longer to kind of work out. One of the keys uh, I said earlier was to uh, stir through the airy lather. If you use it on your face, just keep keep going with the brush. If you shave with that airy lather it's not going to be enjoyable um, so that's the biggest tip with williams and i think most people don't know it um, your grandpa knew it williams is one of those soaps that's been around for so long um, and the second tip is that uh, it seems to do better when you come at it with a brush with the water already in it. My usual pattern is to come, uh, come at it with a fairly dryish brush and then slowly add water through with a syringe. But William seems to like it a little bit more wet. And look at this already. We have, look at that elasticity. Be very interesting to see how this brush works with the Williams. I mean, look at that. And if you're new to lather building, um, many people, many white shavers believe that if it's um, those lathers that look good in videos, they are, you know, have really kind of stiff peaks things like that. It's not the kind of lather you want generally. Those are usually too dry. And when they are dry, they don't, um, relatively speaking, dry. They don't stick to your skin. They don't bond with your skin and be and uh, offer protection. They only are protective when they are slick enough that water helps it to bond with your skin. At least that's the way it seems to me um, what's going on. And it 
just uh, use wet lathers. Sometimes the lather is sliding off the brush. It doesn't make for as good a photo, but it makes for a better shave. So, let's do a little finger test. As you can see, I've got a bowl full of it, so I'm going to have plenty. Take a little bit in your finger, squeeze it. What kind of resistance do we get? Light resistance, I'd say. Rub. How well do we feel the ridges on our fingertips? I feel that there are ridges, but that's about it. So that might be, that might be good enough. Now, am I saying where you need to stop in terms of adding water? No, that's not what I mean. I'm saying these are ways, things you can look for and then to be able to make your own decisions about where to stop. Um, you can also kind of bring the lather to the bottom of the bowl, pull it up and look at how it behaves. Does it wiggle when you move the bowl? Does it, uh, does it stretch out kind of long ways? You know, with lact elasticity. Um, does it stay pretty short? Does it not move at all? Those are all things to look for. You can use those as milestones um, with your soaps. So that, and each soap is kind of different. And I think this one's ready to go. Williams has great slickness. Sometimes it takes uh, skill to get the, the cushion and the, the little bit of density there. Um, but always, even if it's too thin, um, it has great slickness. So I've always gotten great shaves. I experimented with so different, th so many different formulations during August this year, um, but I always came away with a very well, so you know, good shaving lather that protected me and was very slick. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna get my face wet. All right, we are working with 24 hours of growth. Just see how this brush works with Williams. Well, this brush has amazingly soft tips, so that much we know. It's kind of hard. Um, it's almost like if I had a, a one by four and then I put velvet on the end of it. Well, yeah, it is very soft, but it's got a, a stick behind it. That's kind of how it feels. And it, it does that with a few other soaps, too. Then it starts to act a little nicer when I... Because it's just so dense. Um, it starts to act a little nicer when I start, you know, painting like this. So let's do a little bit more scrubbing. Some of these B5 tips will uh, gel. I think um, some people were, so look at that nice lather right there. The uh, lather is uh, maturing on my face here. Um, you know, getting more slick and that kind of thing. But uh, somebody said that uh, in the latter batches of the B5 hairs, they would, uh, they would gel. And I kind of hope it doesn't. I think I generally don't like uh, jelly tips. I got them to feel more like hairs than a bunch of tiny sponges. That's just me. A lot of people really like the gel tips. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna pour a little water over the handle to um, get rid of some of that soap and water. Make it easier to hold. Feels good. See how this 84.84 millimeters for the gap. See how it feels. Okay, it's not pulling. Feels like it's doing actually pretty well. Um, I do feel, um, I don't really feel the blade per se, and uh, Maybe that's why this blade is not really irritating my skin. It's gotten dull-ish over the, so many uses. 
but it's still sharp enough to easily cut hairs and um, it's not pulling, not irritating, anything like that. So this is actually going well so far. Of course this, um, sometimes a razor may have a whole different angle that you need to use when you hold it. And sometimes it might take a little while to find that. Good news is this does not seem to be too aggressive. But one proof of that, a confirmation, will be how it feels when I'm on my third pass. A possibility is that uh, a distinct one that I see is that this will be a, a workable razor. and uh, But then the mild one, for me at least, is not. So I'd pass it on to somebody else. But a lot of people do like mild razors. Um, so I, I would think I'd be able to find somebody to pass it on to. All right. Rinsed off. Now I'm going to load my brush back up. Plenty. So it looks like I probably could have stopped at 20, 20 seconds. But I just wanted to be sure because with, with so many hairs in this knot, I wanted to make sure that there was enough, um, I didn't know if there would be as room, enough room, uh, as much room for the uh, soap. And so I just wanted to be sure. And that's one of the good things about shaving with cheap soap. Is that if you ever need to over, over lather or overload, it just doesn't cost you anything. Now this time, this brush is being more comfortable. Maybe it just kind of needed to warm up a little bit or something. Doesn't feel as hard. Now here's the cool thing. This is, this is probably a nice shavable lather, but since I've got a bowl just full of lather, why don't I just go and get a little bit more Just because I can. And now I switch to painting. And uh, one easy way for me that I've learned to uh, check and see how uh, thick my lather is, is um, I'll do a swipe like I just did. Uh, below and above the swipe will be the, the thick wet edges that's not what I'm talking about. But between, a lot of times you'll see furrows. Now with this brush being so dense, it's got so much hair, there's less in terms of the furrows. Uh, but with uh, the bores and stuff that I've used, it'll look almost like farmland. And look at those uh, furrows and ridges, because if they're clumpy in their makeup, that probably, that is usually an identifier to me that the uh, lather needs a little bit more water. If they all meld together and they're slipping off your face, obviously it's too wet. Uh, but if they're consistent and kind of look like this, then that means my lather is pretty much on point. So I'm happy about that. Soap feels great on my skin. All right. Now here's the test. Um, with this blade, the first pass is always uh, not rough, but um, you know you're cutting your your hairs, um, and uh, and it's not all that smooth. It's not painful, but it's not all that smooth. But now that the majority of the length of the hair is gone, this is nice actually. Okay, so, so far comfort is high. And remember, this is a blade that's been used. 
51 times already. Also, if your lather is too thick, then it will it won't be able to be rinsed off of your out of your razor with gravity speed water and I, what I mean is you're, you're not turning on a jet you know kind of water is falling out of the faucet if it doesn't rinse the lather out of your razor pretty quickly your lather is too thick I mean unless you happen to want a really thick lather I mean maybe that's your thing but generally speaking if you're looking to find a performance lather then that means it's too thick well this uh, second pass went by very well with this razor. Very happy with that. Looks like this bigger gap is more my style, but all will be revealed at the end when we look at the results. Because no comfort matters if it doesn't give you a good shave, right? Another thing to look for in your lather, when you pull your brush out, if you've got a lot of little peaks and it looks like some moon mountainscape uh, with odd shapes and stiffness, then that probably means your lather is a little too thick. Something like this though, look how smooth that is. And you can see how the peak is kind of falling over on itself. That's a little better. More along the lines of what you might want to look for. And uh, if you're new, it's okay. Look at this, when I'm brushing this on, it's very thin right here. You can easily see my skin through it. Well, in a second, we'll switch to the painting motion. And that'll change everything. Then the lather, it doesn't come, it doesn't stay on the side of the brush. It starts to be used. And we're just going to lay down a nice lather, a nice layer of lather all over. And then I can go back to the... Uh, tub and get a little bit more just because I can if it feels too thin sometimes you can just work it a little bit longer and it'll thicken up a lot of times with Williams as I was working with it in August I would uh, put that first layer on and it would be too uh, maybe a little bit too thin or something not quite right, maybe a little too thick, I can't remember. And then, uh, but then the second and third, something would even out. Um, maybe the brush, the massaging action was continuing to help it to uh, get to a good place. And then that second and third, I had this amazing lather, and I'm like, holy cow, this is exactly what I wanted. So, all right. Third pass now. My cheeks are already shaved very well, so. They do shave easily. I'm not going to worry about doing cross grain or anything like that. And then I need to remember to uh, light touch. Only hold the blade to the skin enough to remain in contact. Um, under my area, under my chin right here, it's, it's actually pretty tough. So I don't have to obey as many of those rules. But over here, it's different. So, I'll say that the construction of the Game Changers is nice. They look nice. Um, quality stainless steel um, workmanship there. I'm very happy with that. Um, uh, so, the only problem I had with the earlier one, the 6.8, was uh, just the crappiness of the shave. But it looked very nice. Just the geometry was wrong. All right, I'm going to rinse. 
early indications are I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So that's nice. Um, so I'm going to do my fourth pass as a neck only pass, which is typical for me. Unless I just have the golden combination. There are a few blades and razor combos that will have me done at three passes only. All right, just uh, nice and careful. Very light. How am I holding this razor? Just in the, the middle here, and I'm not, I'm not even touching down here. I don't need leverage. I want it to pivot so that if I do run up against a, a surface that I wasn't expecting, a bump or something like that, a ridge that the razor will give and move instead of me putting more force behind it and pressing too hard on the skin. Now right here, my hairs go sideways, and so this is a cross grain pass. You figure out, um, it's all just up to you. Some people do uh, with the grain, cross grain, and then against the grain. But I pretty much do with the grain, cross grain, cross grain, generally. But on my cheeks, they always get shaved so well. Sometimes I'll just do with the grain, cross grain, with the grain, you know. With my neck, I mainly do cross grain, cross grain, cross grain. Seems to work the best. All right, um, did I get it? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna rinse and take a look at it. Now that is what I'm talking about. It's a much better shave. The uh, above average for me. And that's with the 52 use old blade. Now it's 52, because I just finished the shave. Um, so that is above average, and that's with an old blade. So this gap is definitely, I think it's going to be a better shaver for most people. Um, I do have slightly sensitive skin. There are some things that do irritate it. Uh, occasionally, if I use an aggressive razor, I can't put an aftershave splash on that is mostly alcohol, uh, or I do get a little bit of inflammation in a few of the areas. Um, I don't see any redness right now. And so that means that this, uh, I don't feel any kind of irritation. So uh, I think it's a pretty good possibility that for me, this uh, 0.84 gap, uh, game changer, is just right in a very good place that I enjoy. So uh, for me, hearty thumbs up. Uh, I can only imagine that it would be smoother and uh, a better shaver. Uh, with newer blades that uh, that are sharper so um, uh, it's very cool I don't know that I'd call it a game changer still I mean that is that's a, a monumentous word and it's there are lots of razors that give me the same you know output so it's not changing any game for me at least um, it's just a nice razor that uh, that does above average so and there are several good ones like that um, so uh, the name is still a little bit on the side of hype, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, the, the milder version, I'd call the game over. <laughs> but, uh, but this one, it's, it's, a, it's a good, uh, for people with skin like me, for, with hair density like me, I think it'll be a very good tool. I think it offers a good blend of uh, comfort and smoothness with effective cutting because this is a hard area of my neck to get and it did it well with an old blade so this one I can get behind there we go I'm gonna clean up I'll be back so here's that performance lather we're talking about there is plenty plenty of it and it's uh, it's light it's got a little bit of cushion actually it's got a medium amount now and it's slick, it's wet. This would probably be really good for, and, and look, it's kind of dripping down my hand a little bit. Um, this would be a really good one for straight razor shavers. And uh, most people don't know that Williams can do this, but 
if you know a few a few things, I guess everybody else's grandpa taught them, you know, years, decades ago. And, and so this is how much I got after 30 seconds of loading. Uh, this is extra, three and a half passes, and then this is what's left. Um, and so I could definitely just load for 20 seconds or maybe 15 or even 10 perhaps. So, um, so that's good. And I think I also know this is more of a performance lather. And with this brush, if I want to have more density, um, like I did two days ago, then all I have to do, maybe do a couple more shakes of water out of this brush. And then that's, uh, that'll get me there. Because you can always kind of add water back in. Um, it's hard to take it out. You can always dribble a little water on the tips of your brush or mix it back in your bowl and whip it up a little bit. So there we go with how much excess lather there was. Uh, I'm going to keep cleaning. Oh, and this time I did not. It was either yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. The uh, kind of the liquid that was like right there. I went ahead and poured that. It was very watery. I poured that into my lather bowl and that gave me a little extra water. A little bit of soap, but I think mostly water. And so I don't, um, uh, I did not put that in this time, and I'm glad I didn't. Mm -hmm. There we go. And this is a soap that I just leave open. Dries itself up. I don't know how many uses I'm going to get out of that guy. Pretty cool little dude. I'm going to guess a month and a half, at least. Also, face is dry. I could walk out of here with no skin treatment, no post shave, uh, but I've got average, I've got oily skin. Um, if you, some people regard this soap as a little bit drying, um, but it depends on your skin type. If you've got dry skin, you probably don't want to use this soap. Uh, you probably want to use some with uh, some more, you know, butters or oils in it to help you out, and then follow that up with a good moisturizer or balm. Um, but if you're average, then you might, uh, this will probably be fine for you. And then follow it up with a balm if you if you need that. Uh, some people, decades of men, just follow it up with an aftershave splash that's mostly alcohol and some scent. Um, so whatever works for you uh, best will be fine. But um, in terms of at least my skin, if you have oily skin, you can just walk away after this type of shave. So today, um, as a test of how my skin did, I don't feel any irritation. But I'm going to use an alcohol splash uh, to see if there's something there that I'm not feeling right now. Uh, so right now I think comfort is very, comfort's very good. And uh, we're going to use Chatelain Lux, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, bon Vivant Aftershave. Its main ingredient is the uh, denat denatured alcohol. It also has like chamomile and calendula and witch hazel aloe vera, um, uh, oh, it's got a little menthol. We'll see if it's got too much. Um, so it does have things to help your skin in addition to the alcohol. I've not used this one before. I got it in a, I got it used. It's a good scent. A little bit of stinging over here. I didn't put quite enough, quite enough on my hands. I broke my uh, broke my arm years ago, and I can't bend it in quite as much sometimes to get certain areas on. Oh, what a good scent! What a good scent. Very little stinging, so that means that my technique was on point with this one. Um, I mean, almost none, almost none. My little girl right now, she says uh, she would say, "None stinging, none stinging," and uh, she's in first grade. So we need, we're, we're teaching her about not any stinging, you know, that type of phraseology, but none stinging. All right. So, uh, that's a, that's a nice scent aftershave. Oh, I'm feeling, you know where I'm feeling the menthol in my eyes. I'm not actually feeling the burn in my, uh, on my skin, which is cool. I don't usually like menthol. All right. That's a good scent. Really happy I ended up with that. 
And so it taught me that my technique was good. I don't really have any kind of abrasions or anything. I don't even have any redness. So that's a terrific shave right now. I'm very happy with the 0.84, the more aggressive version of the Razor Rock Game Changer. Uh, so here's where the Game Changer is strong. And maybe this is why they called it the Game Changer. And I'm only talking about the 0.84. Um, this is a stainless steel razor that is at the $50 price point. And that's probably the main deal. Uh, because just about every other stainless razor is about the $100 price point or more. And why stainless steel? Because um, with the, the joint, the top cap here goes down into the base plate, and then the handle screws onto this post. And if you drop a razor, if it's made out of the Zamac or Pop Metal, like Jaggers and Mercours and Parkers, um, they are likely to, uh, they can break because it's just pot metal. And uh, also, if they, if you gradually get water into certain areas past the plating, uh, then when, if the water makes it to that pot metal, then it'll corrode it and eventually it'll, it'll give. But not so with a stainless steel. It'll take lifetimes for these guys, generally, uh, to have any problems with corrosion or anything like that. Um, and if dropped, and they land on a corner of the head or something like that. These are much more likely to be preserved and to be just fine for a shave and keep going. Lots of reports of people dropping their Zamac razors and, uh, you know, and having them just snap and there's no coming back from it because this little, most often this little post here has broken off of the top cap and there's just, that's a stress point. There's no way to doctor that up. But the good news is those are cheaper razors, I think, except of Muley. Um, but, uh, uh, they're less expensive razors and, uh, and that's just what, what happens. And, uh, so you could, you could have it for 20 or 30 years if you took really good care of it and dried it appropriately to where the water didn't get into the bad spots, uh, for the Zamac. Um, but that's the strength of stainless steel. You can avoid those problems. And at the $50 price point, that is, um, I think the 0.84 is a, uh, a wonderful addition to the razor market. Earlier, I wasn't thinking about the price point, um, and this is a very good one. It shaves like a much more expensive razor. Uh, very, uh, I enjoyed the smoothness, um, and it's still, you know, pretty efficient. And this is from an old, an old blade. So, um, yeah, I could start to praise this one. Call it a game changer? Mm, still probably not. But uh, um, a good little razor, a great entrance if a person wants to jump into the uh, um, into the world of sha uh, double head shaving and wants to uh, snag up a stainless steel razor and not have to fork over a hundred bucks. It's probably a, a good way to go. So that's my thought on the razor. The soap, tremendous. Um, this is definitely more of a performance lather, a little bit of cushion, um, a nice slick creaminess when I was rinsing it off though, uh, after the second and third passes, uh, definitely maybe shake a little bit of the water out of this particular brush. And that's, it's the same kind of thing you might have to uh, work through as you discover what, how much water you like for yours. Um, the, uh, so here is the. One another final show, and if you look carefully, uh, there's no blades. Um, here is the, and it's easy to tell them different. The uh, groove here means it's the uh, 84. Now I believe their blog said that they put out a few 84s that were flat. I, I can't remember for sure, um, but uh, but here's the 84 right beside, and I don't know if you can see the gap difference. Kind of the, the raisedness uh, of it, but uh, but it's there and it's noticeable. Um, and so they're both very pretty, uh, very beautiful uh, workmanship. The the buffing and the finish, I'm I'm really happy with. I love that both of them have nice big areas to drain away the stubble and the soap. 
um, just a tremendous um, this one has a recessed uh, little guy and so if you get a handle that has a flange on it it may not uh, work with this guy but it's kind of generous and so I think most of them will but this one it's flat because they made the groove and so I think uh, it's possible that more handles might fit it um, but for my for my money the the mild almost doesn't even have a place um, in my in my den it just doesn't it only worked uh, I think uh, six out of nine blades that I tried it with failed horribly um, leaving big they were it was a comfortable shave but it left big swaths of kind of uncut hair on my neck if uh, caveat if you can go against the grain it's possible that that mild one might work with work with you and catch those hairs um, but I have to have more better geometry better geometrical stuff to uh, to take advantage of it because I can't go against the grain I have to come at it sideways all right there's a little bit of uh, comparison between the two um, the uh, radio knob handle is the one that came with that I ordered this one with I like it a lot I like the the knurling is not too aggressive and that's exactly where I want to hold the razor and so then to have it be a uh, solid uh, flat finished here I think looks nicer than having the whole handle knurled um, and then I think this little guy is nice because when I switch to uh, this type of movement a lot of times I'll grasp it by the end and having a little knob there is is a good idea so I uh, I'm liking the, the 84 because the only problem I had with the other one was geometry. So you raise that blade up just a bit, and now it can cut well. And that's what happened. Very cool. Really still enjoying this Bon Vivant aftershave. Man, that's nice. I like it. All right. Um, I hope this helped you in some way. I hope there was something in here for you. Um, take care. Sugar Daddy Shaves. Have a good night.